Hey everyone, today I'm going to teach you the basic terminology of Tunisian crochet. And to start today, I'm using DK yarn, which is a weight three and a five millimeter hook. I don't have the wire attached because I'm just giving an example today. So this is how we start. Make a, put a slip knot on your hook and we are going to start the foundation row. The foundation row is for every single Tunisian crochet pattern. It starts your foundation. So for this, let's just chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not very big, let's do 10. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, great. So now we need to turn our chain over and we're going to work into the back bumps. This first loop here counts as your first stitch. So therefore, we're going to skip the first loop and work into the second chain from the hook. Now I'm just going to make sure here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, great. Second chain from the hook. You insert your hook and you pull up a loop. And then you continue to insert your hook and pull up a loop the whole way down. Mm -hmm. There we go. I went a little backwards. Sometimes it can be a little fiddly working into the first few bumps. If you chain too um, tightly like me here. <laughs> it can be a little fiddly, but there we go. All right, now let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are good to go. So we are actually not finished. In Tunisian crochet, your rows are actually worked in two parts. First, this way, which is called the forward pass, so from right to left, and then from left to right, which is called the return pass. So we already worked from right to left. So now let's do the return pass. To do the return pass, you need to yarn over and pull through one stitch. So basically chain one. Okay, you are going to start every single Tunisian crochet pattern the same way when you are working flat. Now let's finish the return pass. So yarn over and you will pr pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops, all the way down. Fantastic. Now let's work a few basic stitches. So first let's start with the Tunisian simple stitch. Here is our first stitch, right? Our first loop on our hook, it counts as a stitch. So the Tunisian simple stitch just works into the front loop or the front bar here. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop in the front bar. Let's do it again. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So let's do that all the way down. Okay, now in our last stitch, it can be a little tricky because it doesn't look the same, right? So turn your chain over and you can see it's hard to spot on the second row, but let's take a look. There's a small little V here, right? Do you see that small little V? Every single Tunisian crochet stitch, you are going to place your last stitch into this V and you're going to place it the same way. All you do is insert your hook in between that V right there, and then you pull up a loop and that is done. All right, great. So now let's do a return pass. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two loops, all the way down. Great. 
So now let's do one more row of Tunisian simple stitch and then my yarn's going crazy. <laughs> I need to get my yarn bowl. And then we can talk about the Tunisian knit stitch. Okay, so again, we will very simply, like the namesake, insert our hook into the front bar and go all the way down. Oops. Okay, and again, turn over. We're gonna work into this V right there. Okay, great. Now we are finished here. So now we will return pass, right? Because we're actually not finished with our row until we return pass and we are not finished. So chain one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way down. very relaxing okay lovely so also a little tip if you're curious in how many rows we did you can just turn your work over and count the loops so we did one two three great now let's talk about the knit stitch so even though we're doing a new stitch the first stitch remains the same uh, this counts as our first stitch and just leave it go you will not work into it so now for the knit stitch you are going to see these two hoops the front uh the front bar and the back bar here right you will insert your hook in between the bars just like that and you can see i hope where i inserted it between those two bars so let's try it again insert in between the two bars and pull up a loop all the way down Great, and now let's turn, place your last stitch in the same exact way by just inserting your hook and pulling up a loop. Now let's do the return pass in the same manner. Chain one, good. Now yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way down. So it's kind of hard to see because we started down here with the simple stitch, but let's keep going. So insert our hook in between the two bars. Feel free to pause this at any time if you need um, to practice. Okay, and then insert our hook here. Okay, so we just completed a forward pass in the Tunisian knit stitch. Now let's do our return pass. Yarn over, pull through one, so chain one. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way down. Okay, now you can see how the stitch is looking a little knit. So do one more row. I will do one more row and show you. Um, you can pause the video and start practicing. I did one more row and let's take a look. So you can see these V's are starting to form and it looks knit, it's really cool. And then down here, uh, this is the simple stitch and this is the Tunisian knit stitch, right? Okay, so now we're going to do the Tunisian pearl stitch, which is so beautiful but it's a little tricky so bring your yarn into the front of the hook like this and then just like in the tunisian simple stitch you will insert your hook into the front bar only so insert your hook into the front bar now it's good to keep your finger there because it's kind of like a compound move that you have to learn now you're going to bring the yarn back around the front of your hook and into the back. So here we go, ready? Bring it around like this. So you can just let go. And now your yarn should be in the back of your hook. Hold onto the base here, it's a little easier. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through one loop. 
Okay, let's do that again. So, ready? Bring your yarn around the front of the hook. Insert your hook into the front bar. Take your yarn back around the back. Hold on tight to keep the tension here. Not tight, just hold on. And then yarn over. Oof. Pull through one. Great, let's try again. Bring your yarn forward. Insert your hook into the front loop. Bring it around to the back. Hold on. Yarn over, pull through one. You can start seeing this fun little wave. I'll show you what it looks like faster, I guess, when you're in the groove. When you're in the groove, it'll look like this. Oop, kind of looks like a musical instrument to me, like a violin. Very musical and beautiful. Okay, so again, ooh, it can be tricky. There we go. Again, last stitch goes into this V. Now my V is kind of hard to see because I must have worked it a little tightly. And also with the um, purl stitch, the last stitch, it pulls a little to the right, so it can be tricky to spot. So always turn your work to the side. Oh, there's my V. Excuse me, I gotta get it in there. Oh, look at my tension is so tight here. Okay, I got my hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop. Okay, now let's return pass. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way down. Okay, great. Now, actually, I only did one more row of the purl stitch, but I want to show you how it looks when you've completed a row of purl stitch. So let's bring our hook around and insert your hook into that front bar like that and pull it through. Okay, bring your yarn around to the front of your hook. Now, when you're doing purl stitch, it can be like your actual bar can maybe uh, pull because of tension and get smaller. So it can be hard to see, but try to keep your tension loose. Okay, so bring your hook around, pull through. So see how I have to kind of force my hook in there? <laughs> that's okay if that's happening to you. Okay, so I'm gonna meet you back when I come to the end and we will talk about the bind off. Okay, so here we are in our last row technically and we have to work a bind off. So a bind off is just a row of regular crochet stitches that fills in the gaps, this hole right there. So if you are working on a pattern and it's for the simple stitch, you would work a single crochet, slip stitch, double crochet, whatever the pattern calls for, stitch into the first uh, bar, the front bar here, because it's the simple stitch. If you're working on a knit stitch, you would work a single crochet, slip stitch, whatever, in between the front and back bar, like you would a knit stitch. Oh dear. But since we are on a purl stitch here, let's see what it looks like on the purl stitch. Uh, when we purl stitch, we work into the front bar. So let's bind off with a single crochet. So insert your hook into the front bar, yarn over, pull up a loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's your single crochet. Let's do it again. Um, here's our next one. Insert your hook into the front bar, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. So let's single crochet all the way down. And this is the bind off row. When you are finished with however many rows you need to work in your pattern for whatever you're making. Okay, and so just like all of the Tunisian crochet stitches, you are going to place a single crochet into that V at the end of the row. Great. Let's take a look. 
there's absolutely no holes there in the bind off. So it's quite nice. Um, okay, so these are some basic Tunisian crochet terminology and also some basic stitches. The simple stitch, the knit stitch, and the purl stitch. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!